Now, the truth of the matter is that women are underrepresented in politics. About less than 10% are members of parliament, and this doesn't make up for the large number of women voters in Malaysia. In the BN government, women make up about like 5%, and that's less than 5% in cabinet so far. Does not necessarily go in accordance to the election promise by Barisan National and by the Prime Minister himself that there should be at least 30% women representation in government. On face off today, we have Tan Sri Napsia Omar, veteran politician, actually my personal favourite as well when I was coming up in journalism. Welcome Tan Sri to our show. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice yes. having you. And also Ernie Chen, our resident yes. guest. A familiar face, huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tan Sri, just on a light note, tell us, uh, yes. share with us, yeah. Um, the Prime Minister did not keep to his promise. Does it look that way? It does look that way. Um, it does look that way on the surface uh, mm. but I must explain he did put in let me see about uh, 23 mm. candidates uh, which is about what 65 uh, percent mm. uh, but out of these 23 15 percent 15 won not 15 percent uh, 15 mm -hmm. won mm -hmm. and eight was a loss in the election now what does that tell you he made an attempt to put in women in parliament mm. but the women lost mm. and which mean, which says that is the grassroots there the voters are not voting in women mm. in the parliament mm. yes shouldn't he still fulfill his promise of the 30 percent manifesto of women needing to be in the cabinet because mm. at the end of the day mm. like it or not the women would better understand how to take care of the women out there yeah. and having more women ministers would definitely be more beneficial wouldn't you agree I agree with you, uh, but at the same time, I must say that oh, uh, out of the f uh, 222 seats, I agree with you. If he but had this intention to yes. put in 30% women, he must at least put mm -hmm. in about 30%. That would be about what? Uh, two, 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 uh, 30 percent of that would be maybe 15, 15, mm -hmm. 30, about 30 sure. people, 30 but, women. But if that but, was not real and yeah. pos possible, why did he make that manifesto promise of 30 percent? Because he put it very, very much less. It's a minimum like uh, 5 percent of women candidates being fielded in 2013 general elections. Yes. That's a very, very small number and we have 222 seats, Tansri. How do yes. you feel? A little bit sad, I must say. A little bit yeah. sad, you know. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, it's the voters themselves must also voice out mm -hmm. that they want to have 30% women in parliament. Have you ever heard this? I have not up to this date hear any women from down there saying, we want 30%. So you must remember, it's the prime minister who said, yeah, Are the opposition yeah. party pack women leaders fighting more for the women leaders yeah, compared to Barisan National? I understand that pack. at least 20% of uh, opposition mm. leaders, women, yes. female opposition leaders contested in 2013 general elections, yes. which is much, much more than what we have seen from Barisan National for the first time mm -hmm. but in the old uh, in previous uh Raya or previous general election yeah you do see more women faces mm. uh you know as uh candidates in from, the, from barisan from barisan from barisan yes yeah. but i agree with yeah. you. but that's the past so yes we're talking about the future now and yes. are we saying that barisan national is outdated irrelevant because they don't understand that today if you want to serve the women better you want to be able to take care of the ladies the, the independent mothers you need to have more women leaders to support that. Or is it because um, Dr. Mahade, he gave more room to women leaders those days because we see the number actually deteriorating mm -hmm. as the, the, the prime ministers actually change. I mean, there's, there's a change of guards. We see less women, well, leaders, and then comes to uh, Dr. Najib's time, it's even yes. more less. Yeah, Tantri? Uh, I can see that, yes. I, mm -hmm. I have to agree, unfortunately. I have to agree with you. Mm -hmm. So are we saying that the Barisan National uh, leadership is quite irrelevant in allowing lesser women to represent them in the cabinet itself? I cannot agree with you on principles of being a party member. Uh, I would look really bad if I say and agree with you. But I must say there were lots of representation from the women within the party. Mm 
Mm. Because you must understand, Wanita Amna is 1.29 or 1.3 exactly. million members. Exactly. 1.29 million uh, Wanita Amno members yes, in yes. Amno. Yeah, we yeah. made our representation, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. But in between that, only God knows what And happened. how many do we <laughs> see? And how many Wanita Amno um, uh, members do we see as Chalun? About 4.71% only in the elections. So this does not represent at all, you know, the mm. voice of women in AMNO or even in Barisan National. And in yes. DON or Dewan Undangan Negeri, we only have 4.75%. I agree with you. I, I, I'm not going to challenge you on that. We have a very senior, former senior Wanita AMNO leader, mm. uh, Datuk Kamalia, yeah. who was, uh, dis who, who decided at the very last minute, because she was not chosen to represent in uh, competing for mm. MP position, she also decided. Yeah, yeah, she decided because to leave factions. the party. Yes. Mm. And, and because of that, are we saying that we have leaders in mm. the women's party, but mm. yet they are not chosen to compete? And not given the chance. Tansri, mm. how do you your opinion? About this? Your opinion, your honest, honest. To My honest, opinion. honest opinion. <laughs> yeah. Well, I look at it that maybe at that time there there should be more, um, I would say, uh, discussion, um, and perhaps she should be given also a a, a, a forum to or, or, or a space for her to also put uh, across her mm -hmm. views. Mm -hmm. uh, but who knows? Maybe the those that are behind the scene there are saying that maybe she might not win. Maybe they have information. Mm -hmm. That says she may not win. Who, who knows? Could it be because of too much infighting within Amno itself that's created a lot of fractions yeah. that has caused a uh, backstabbing and also a lot of sabotage? Yeah, because you were there, Tansri. Tell us mm -hmm. the real story. Tell us the truth. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, the truth is that when I come to know of it, um, Camilla is already on her path to mm -hmm. go and contest the election and uh, there was no time for us even to contact her mm. uh, to have so a discussion with her. So it was sudden? Was it some, some yeah, it was a decision, decision that she had made on her own. Okay. You know, but Do you know the real reason for this? The actual reason? For not, because not she a, could not get a, a place as a parliamentary candidate. She wanted to be a mm -hmm. parliamentary candidate okay. and she did not get that. So are we sending a very clear direct message to Wanita Putri Amno that in the near future, if you do not toe the line, no matter how hard you struggle to mm. fight for the party, mm. within your own individual uh, fractions, you will never get there. Because yeah. she yeah. was obviously the number two uh, Wanita mm. in Amno itself. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Do we actually have to nod all the time and say yes, yes, yes to the mm. men? Yeah. Then only we are given positions and, you know, top notches in the government, for example. I feel in this particular case, she's sending us a message. And it is something that it could should not be ignored. Mm -hmm. I think we will have to give it some deeper thoughts mm -hmm. about it, so that this doesn't not happen a mm -hmm. second time. Tansri, I put it to you that there are no strong women leaders in Barisan National as compared to Pakatan Rakyat. What is your view on this? What is your take on this? I put it to you. Not enough. No, not enough women strong enough in, mm -hmm. in Barisan as compared to Pakatan Rakyat. You see, Tan Sri, when you were yeah. around, yeah. it was Tan Sri Napsia, it yeah. was Tan Sri Rafida, yeah. it was uh, uh, Iron uh, Ladies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but today, yeah. we, you, you don't hear of any names. Yeah. So, Ong Yen Yen. Mm -hmm. being you, being a, a, a leader of the women in Malaysia, what do you think is going to happen to the future of Barisan leadership as far as the women are concerned? Let me put this way to you. You can take a horse to water but you can't make the horse drink the water. It has to drink by itself. Right. So you're saying... The that feel is there. Yes. The women are there. Take the opportunity. So you're saying that they are just not doing what they're supposed to do. They're not driven like before. When Rafida, when yourself, you, you people were more driven. Uh, you can read it yourself, isn't it? <laughs> not saying anything. 1.2 million country. 1.2 million... Uh, members in just Wanita itself and are we saying that there's just absolutely none? I mean, do you have names of people that can become the the successors to uh, Datu Sri Sharizad? Because obviously, we can't think of anyone. Do you have any names that you would like them to be leading the party? Uh, like you, I'm also stumped for an answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tantri, coming back to um, which, which side is giving more chances to women? The opposition side or Barisan National? Honestly, when you look at it from, from someone who's sitting on the outside now, mm. yeah? Yes. Yeah. 
Well, when you look at the numbers, yes, the opposition has uh, more women mm -hmm. uh, and vocal too at that, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Are we also then saying that the opposition women leaders are more competent than the Barisan national leaders? And also because they're given a chance by the leadership in mm -hmm. the opposition. Um, maybe it's not that they are more competent, I think. The thing is that uh, Barisan Wanita women, they themselves uh, must take that initial step to come mm -hmm. forward mm -hmm. and speak their mind. Mm -hmm. So opposition uh, women leaders are more vocal and, and Barisan should take, 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 um, in a sense, you know. Uh, from this. Then, then actually, yeah. why have Amno, have, uh, why have Wanita Amno or Putri Amno not been able to attract this type of women into the party? That's a very good question. But I think it, it, it through Putri, there may be more mm -hmm. younger women mm -hmm. uh, with maybe better, um, would I would say, insight into the political scene who mm -hmm. might come forward. What you see, in yeah. politics, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I get very upset and uptight when the men say, oh, we must have qualified women. Mm -hmm. it, it's not how long your qualification is. It's the passion that you have. Uh, you know, to so you see a number of factors, yeah? yeah? It's not just competency, it's also the culture, it's yeah. also what men think of women, Ernie. Yeah. Correct. Mm. And the men definitely think of women in a certain way. They're mm -hmm. supposed to be behind the, the, the bars, the kitchens and things like that. Are we allowing the men to think like that? And are the women standing up to fight to say that, you know what, I deserve a position?